Hello and welcome. This is Dr. Jerry Cuomo from Boca Raton, Florida, and I want to wish everybody a very happy April Fool's Day out there. Well, we're not fooling today. We're actually going to go over how to uh, make your life easier, uh, taking impressions and transferring information to your dental lab. Now, I'm just going to start off by talking about um, a video that I made uh, for dentists and dental labs. And uh, today I decided, you know, why not just take it one step further and show you exactly how I make my transfer impression copings. This one happens to be Strauman's Bone Level RC. And um, before I show you how to make this jig, I want to show you a case that I'm working on right now, and it's called Ken's case. Now, Ken is a patient in practice. He uh, had to undergo um, full upper rehabilitation using uh, bone level uh, implants. And in Ken's case, um, we have seven upper implants that we placed, and we're using um, the bone level transfer copings here. In this model, we have seven transfer copings, and we've gone from tooth number two, which shows a lot of information below the gum line. This analog actually um, will show you the distance between the level of the bone and the uh, bottom of the implant here, and then, of course, from the top of the implant toward the crest of the soft tissue. All this information is transferred um, directly to the laboratory model. Here, between the two bicuspids, I couldn't use this round cylinder shape. I had to actually trim a little bit in between in the interprox for these two to see properly. Now, what I want to tell you is when you do trim these, uh, do go in between with a disc in your hand first so that you can get in here and polish out any undercuts that may exist. Now, there might have been a slight, really slight undercut in here that uh, I didn't polish out, but again, you need to make sure that there are no undercuts. So if, if you're in between um, two natural adjacent teeth, then I would suggest polishing both sides and making sure that they're flared uh, to the occlusal, okay, so you don't lock it in uh, in the model. won't lock it in the mouth, but you'll lock it in on the model. All right, so what else do we show you here? Well, later on in another video, I'm going to show you how to assemble the analogs together. We not only do it here in the base of the model, but we also do it in the mouth, so I'll sh also show you how we do um, do the assembly work uh, so that we uh, have a perfect um, scan and a perfect uh, uh, seating of the frameworks and the final case. All right, so enough said. Um, I'm going to show you how we go from uh, from a point A to point B um, right now. This is the jig. I'll just show you how I made the jig. Um, I'm just going to remove one of the peak abutments off of uh, the main model. We'll put that in place. Now, mind you, I, I placed an analog here. I went in and poured snapstone into this. All this is is just a, a hair spray cap so that the model stone would set and I would have enough stone to go all the way up to the top of the metal rim okay of the of the analog itself I didn't want to go past it so if you look down in here you'll see that okay for those of who you who have the video out there you're going to understand this a little bit more um, by the way that video is uh, ready for um, for uh, those who want it and I'll be happy to send it to you okay Back quickly here, we're going to tighten this down, and I always suggest tighten it as hard as you can by hand, okay, without ratcheting it down. And then the next step is to drill a couple holes for retention in the stone, and then fill the rest of it up with this, um, this uh, clear silicone material, okay, you can get it from your dental supply company. All right, once this sets, then remove it, and you can take a scalpel and just trim away the top until it meets the top of the Strauman peak abutment. 
All right, I like the Pika button because it's very easy to replicate. Very easy. You can design your own, but I like I like it. Now, this is what it would look like before the peak abutment. Okay, this is just a, a used um, uh, open tray transfer uh, coping that Strauman gives you. You see the difference? Okay. Now, you want to stick that in place like so and then hand tighten that down. I'm going to take a new one and then show you how to do this. All right. The old ones have four interlocking struts to them. The new ones have only two. Why? Because they they want to use this for bicuspids and anteriors as well. So they, they the company took out that. Now, <coughs> yeah, Strauman uh, is definitely listen to us uh, when we have ideas. Get back to them. Okay. The only thing I don't like is this countersink which to me it's kind of hard to get this in the mouth I like the old screws better so I'm saving my old, all my old screws I'm gonna just switch them out okay don't over tighten <laughs> well, any stripping going on in here okay now I'm gonna just turn the light down I'll show you how to inject this blue block out material from Ultradent it's called LC block out all right and uh, this is just the front cover LC block out resin. Now I've already preloaded it from Banco. I have a um, bendable applicator. This happens to be the 25 gauge. It's extra long. All right, from Banco. And then we're going to go down using the microscope now. I'm going to go all the way down and show you how I inject and how far to inject. Okay, so with a few minutes remaining here on the video. Um, here we go. Now there's going to be some bubbles. You'll see some evidently some bubbles come up in here. So what I do is I just get in there and I just get down as far as I can and I keep it moving. Always keep it moving. Let me blow this up again. There we go. There. There we go. Okay, all the way down. And just keep injecting. It's really simple, you know, when you think about it. Just keep the tip submerged as you inject. And by stirring it a little bit, if there is a bubble, it'll, it'll pop the bubble. All right, now this is a brand new syringe. Sometimes when you have a syringe lying around, there might be some bubbles involved. Hey, if you get a bubble in there and it comes out and you're processing, um, I happen to use a triad machine. Uh, for processing. I put it on five minutes and uh, process it all the way. Just going to continue to inject here. Okay. I go around to the first, I call them terraces. All right. So the, to the first terrace till I get it there. Oh. Trying to keep my hands steady here for you. It looks like I needed some extra right down in here. I hope you can see this on the video. It's a little dark in here without a light on, but since it's light curable, I can't really. Uh... Now I'll bring it up through the first strut only. Okay, that's all you need to do. There's one, and here's the other. Okay, and that's it. And then you go light cure this. And now when you light cure it, it comes back. And uh, it's going to look like these. So let me just switch power here. All right, so here they are. And you have to trim them. So you like to get them very smooth. So you're going to go from pulling them out looking like this. I'll turn the light on again. Okay, so you have to trim all those aberrations away, but just do it gently. I use some real fine polishing disc, okay, and then you get it kind of baby smooth like this. And you'll see on the surface there are little areas that you need to polish, but this is a used one. Just want to show you it's been through the battle. It's been through the wars out there. Listen, if uh, you need me to send you that video, just feel free. I'll be happy to get it out in the mail to you. It's really nothing for me to make. Um, I'll be happy to, to help you in any way, shape, or form. Uh, this is Dr. Jerry Cuomo. I, I hope I've 
giving you an opportunity to to make your um, implant cases better. Um, you know, I I've I've really um, I've, I think that this process is the way to go. And um, and here, look at the final result. Look how nice and clean that is uh, with your bone level. Platform switching implants. Have a nice day, April 1st, 2011. Take care.